Good morning to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here. Hurricane Outlook and Discussion Time. It is Tuesday, the 24th of August, 2021. On my way back home from Long Island and the Tropical Storm Henri field work. And I made it about three-fourths of the way home, so looking forward to being back home and then probably <sighs> getting ready to go back on the road again. I'll explain what that means as we progress. So good to have you here, and let's get on with it. First of all, in the trivia and history department, wow, hard to believe, all the way back, what is it, 34 years now? 1992, uh, Category 5, Andrew making landfall down in extreme South Florida there. Uh, just south of the greater Miami area, the core, that perfectly defined core, that buzzsaw moving through South Florida. You know the devastation, you know the history that is behind this and a lot of the changes that happened as a result of Andrew. Some positive stuff came out of it, and a lot of places are now built stronger to what we call the Miami-Dade Code because of this event. So looking back, that's quite the radar image. You don't want to ever see that on your doorstep, that certainly goes without saying. Do we have anything like that coming? Well, no, not right now, and that certainly is good news. What do we have? Well, let's take a look. We have the remnants of Henri still lingering up here off the coast of New England or just straddling the coast there. And then we have a system in the southeastern Caribbean that we need to watch. Another one up here just outside of the main development region in the central Atlantic. And then a third system way down deep in the deep tropics off the coast of Africa, moving over to the Pacific. This is Marty, and I know I've been absent from doing videos for a couple of days as I've been traveling and retrieving equipment and whatnot. But yeah, Marty uh, snuck in after making landfall here as Grace. The energy from it, at least some of it, kind of like what we call the DNA of it, made it across and became Marty in the Pacific. And the reason that it did not keep the name Grace is because it was it lost the well-defined surface circulation. And I know that it's all like technical stuff or whatever, but the mid and upper level energy kept going, and then it was able to generate a new surface circulation, and that's the key there in the Eastern Pacific, so it became Marty, in case you're interested in that kind of stuff. Uh, luckily, it's not affecting any land, and it won't. And then we have another system here off the coast of Mexico with a high chance of development, but that too should stay parallel to the coast, but far enough offshore that we shouldn't have any issues for our friends down in southern Mexico. So the wide shot of the Atlantic Basin this morning, courtesy of Tropical Tidbits, this is the area where, let's get a better, <laughs> better telestration. Let's use the color white, that'll stand out better and make the line thicker. There we go. So this is the area we're going to watch that's got a potential uh, for developing more as it heads towards the Yucatan and then maybe somewhere in this vicinity after that. And I'll show you, you know, you start aiming stuff at Texas and people start wondering and you better have a good reason for it, right? And I'll show you what the models are showing, just the general pattern. And then we have this other system out here in the open Atlantic just north of the main development region. It's got pretty good computer model support. It's going to kind of work its way up to the subtropics. Water temperatures up here are warm enough, and if you've got favorable upper-level winds, it can develop and just be uh, probably an issue only to shipping interest out that way. Uh, but I think that'll go on to develop, and it has a shot of eventually becoming a hurricane out over the open water here, so I really wouldn't worry about it too much unless you're captaining a, uh, is that how you say it, or piloting a big ship? Whatever, you get the idea. Not going to be an impact directly to land areas. And we'll watch this too. The computer model support for this is kind of waffling back and forth. It's way off in the distance, quite literally, so we don't need to have too much concern with it for now. The vorticity chart, very helpful in identifying the areas that are trying to bundle the energy. There's the low-level circulation associated with the leftovers of Henri. Certainly intact off the coast of New England, but... Water temperatures are too cold up there, so there's not much in the way of latent heat and energy for it to make any kind of a comeback. Then we've got the energy down here, close to the coast of South America, not far from the ABC islands of Aruba, Bonaire, and Curacao. And this tropical wave energy is going to make its way across the Caribbean, and we'll be able to watch and see. I love this chart. I talk about this one 
a lot, and I show it a lot. It shows you that low-level vorticity, and if you can get that low-level energy to bundle up and be there, then everything else can kind of stack above it. And then you look and see how aligned everything is or not. And this is a great chart to show that from the University of Wisconsin Tropical page. So we'll be able to watch this in the coming days to see if it starts to look like that. You know, that's a good example um, of the system off the uh, coast of Mexico there, or at least another feature out there. That's what the uh, vorticity looks like for something that's bundling up. This isn't quite there yet, so obviously it has some work to do. Then we've got the other area right here in the open Atlantic, um, just out of the main development region, as I mentioned. And this will work its way up to the north and west over time. And again, let's just watch and see, does it become less linear like this? And, you know, more of a straight line, that's what linear means, right? Or does uh, it become more round and bundling that energy? I really do like this graphic. It's just a great tool. This is also a great tool, showing you the upper level winds. And this is a very strong, what we call tut, or tropical upper tropospheric trough with an upper level low. And this is very, very unfavorable for development. And that extends with some of those southwesterly winds all the way into the Caribbean. And that's why this system that we're watching right here is not going to develop anytime soon. This has to change, and it does. The weather is changing every second. But the large-scale pattern looks like it'll change to one that is more favorable, especially once this system reaches the Northwest Caribbean. So this right here, though, is going to preclude anything from bothering the East Coast or the Southeast anytime soon. As long as that's there, uh, anything that approaches is going to get sheared. There's going to be dry air, and there's substance in there. That is not the pattern for a, uh, a landfall or threat of a landfall for Florida or the Carolinas or the East Coast as a whole as long as this is sitting there. And, you know, stuff changes. It's not going to be there all summer, or at least the rest of the summer, but it certainly is now. Um, and we'll see, because once this system gets through that over here to the uh, western, sorry, my phone was ringing, the western Caribbean, you know, then, like I said, conditions could change, and that's what it's looking like, and that is alluded to in this tweet here from Dylan, um, I like to pick different people that are tweeting about stuff. You know that, how I showcase others and what they're um, tweeting about, especially when it's relevant and helpful. And overall, the guidance, this is the EP, EPS, the Ensemble Prediction System, from the Euro, the ECMWF probability of a tropical depression over the next uh, around six days or so, uh, between days four and six. And so there's a pretty high probability here of a depression forming somewhere in the core of this. This is a really nice representation, a good visual on what that model and its 51 members. See, that's the idea here. Instead of just one model, a deterministic run that shows one outcome, this takes a whole bunch of outcomes, kind of the what-ifs, and combines it into a graphic that we can get the density gradient of probability using the color code. It's wonderful, the tools that we have. So this gives you an idea of confidence that, at least in the modeling, there's pretty good confidence, especially towards the Yucatan there, that's closer to day four, that a depression will form, and then we just go from there. So confidence beginning to go up just a little bit, that we could have another system. And the next name, if this were to become a named storm before anything else out there, the name would be Ida which is interesting. Um, we had Ike that affected Texas, just saying. You never know. So we'll certainly keep an eye on this. And in the modeling, this is the um, ensemble look, basically. This is a deterministic model. You know, so it's just one run of the operational. This is the GFS, uh, the 6Z run. And this is the same level of the atmosphere that I was showing you on that vorticity map. And this is what we're watching right here. This is what I want you to pay attention to. You'll also see over here coming out of the edge of the map that other system that looks like it'll try to develop as well. So let's watch. Keep your eyes. We'll mark it up again right here and then in this zone going through here over the next few days. Put this into motion frame by frame. It moves along, starts to get a little bit more energized. Uh, the GFS suggesting 
it begins to come together off the coast of Honduras and Nicaragua. We'll see. That matters where the genesis would happen. Uh, it bundles the vorticity or the energy down there, comes across the Yucatan. This is about day four or so. So you go back and forth 96 hours. So, you know, day four and then go out to day five right there off the northwest coast of the Yucatan. And then just day six. Yes, a implied threat to Texas. And this operational matches up very well with what Dylan was showing here in this graphic. You see, so this is the Euro and the Ensemble Prediction System, so 51 members. This is one GFS run. They match pretty well. That's pretty interesting. Also, look, the other system over here eventually becomes a very strong tropical cyclone in the modeling way out here at uh, six days. It wouldn't surprise me at all. We've seen development in the deep, uh, in the deep tropics. Well, we do sometimes. We see development up here in the subtropics. Uh, water temperatures are warm, and if you get the right upper level conditions, you bet. I mean, it's only at the, the latitude here of, you know, Charleston, roughly. Uh, so it's not like it's way up in the North Atlantic. Shouldn't be a problem for land areas, though. That is for sure. Uh, comparing the, EC, uh, the ECMWF, the Euro operational as well. Again, this is the ensemble. This is the operational. So let's see what it shows, the operational from last night. Same kind of thing, uh, four days, five days, six days, seven days, you know, implying a threat to Texas. So it's hurricane season. Water temperatures warmer than average all throughout this region for the most part. The cold wake left from Grace, still there. La Nina trying to set up shop. A little bit warmer than average here, pretty significantly in the eastern, extreme eastern Pacific. Uh, if this starts to abate more, it could open up the window of opportunity for more development here, especially in October, but we still need to get through August and all of September. Very warm in the northwest Atlantic, main development region nice and warm as well, relative to average. Listen, everything pretty much in the hurricane-prone areas is warm enough. Now we're looking at the anomalies. How much warmer than average are we looking at? And as you can clearly see, at least on this depiction of it from this particular graphic. There's different methodologies, different background base states to look at. I use this one. It's pretty consistent over the years, and it's showing a very warm Atlantic. It's the height of hurricane season, so you know, there's nothing alarming here. We have to just be ready. we got the tools, all this analysis. We know that something could be coming several days out, and if it heads towards Mexico or Texas or whatever, or if it doesn't develop at all, or if it becomes a strong hurricane, we're going to know. And that is the bottom line, right? All right. So that is it from me for today. I'll pack up here at the hotel. Um, I'm south of Fredericksburg, I think. Sometimes I'm like, where am I? And I'll head on back home, and I'll cover all this for you more. I'll be back in the office, and we'll see how things evolve today with the modeling and so forth. And we'll keep chugging through the season, and, you know, we knew it was going to be busy, and we'll do the best we can to stay on top of it. I'll do my part on this end, all right? Thanks, as always, for tuning in from that end, your end, whatever device you are watching and listening from. I do appreciate your time and attention. I'm Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. We'll talk again some more tomorrow.